Hello everyone, welcome back again to Military TV. Today I'm going to take you to see North Korea's launch of two new strategic missiles during the October 10th parade. The military parade, marking the 75th anniversary of the ruling Workers' Party, showed off what appeared to be a huge new intercontinental ballistic missile. It also featured a vast array of modernized military systems, from small arms through anti-tank and air defense systems at the military parade on Saturday. Military experts monitoring the parade through North Korean state television said the new missile would be one of the largest road mobile ICBMs in the world if it becomes operational and could represent the threatened new strategic weapon Kim had talked of at the start of this year. For the international community, Kim's message was, North Korea was a military force to be reckoned with, but not a threat. This video provides an initial assessment of each of the two missiles based on the limited information. Number one is the new Intercontinental Ballistic Missile or ICBM. The new ICBM, presumably a Hwasong-16, appears to be approximately 25 to 26 meters long and 2.5 to 2.9 meters in diameter, about 4 to 4.5 meters longer and about 0.5 meters larger in diameter than the North Hwasong-15 ICBM, flight tested once in November 2017. Indeed, the new missile has been correctly characterized as the world's largest ICBM, in part because countries with ICBMs generally seek to make their road mobile ICBMs smaller so they can be more mobile and concealable. Nevertheless, we estimate the new missile's launch weight at roughly 100,000 to 150,000 kilograms compared to some 80,000 kilograms for the Chinese DF-41 solid propellant road mobile ICBM and about 104,000 kilograms for the former Soviet SS-24 rail mobile solid ICBM. The first stage of the new ICBM appears large enough in diameter to accommodate four of the Soviet RD-250 sized rocket engines believed to power the Hwasong-15, which used two in its first stage. Based on the assumption of four RD-250 type engines in the first stage, however, we estimate the new missile could, in principle, deliver 2,000 to 3,500 kilograms of payload to any point in the continental United States much greater than the Hwasong 15's assessed 1,000 kg payload capability to the same range. But why would the North Koreans need such a big missile? Especially since the Hwasong 15 would appear to have sufficient range and payload capability and room for improvement to meet North Korea's operational targeting needs, and is much easier to move and conceal. We assume that there are two main possibilities, which are not mutually exclusive. First, there may be a political rationale for producing or parading the new system. An unexpected super-heavy ICBM would be a classically Khrushchevian statement of North Korea's technical prowess, the robustness of its ability to threaten the U.S., and the permanence of its nuclear weapon status. Second, there may be operational reasons to make such a large missile. The North may want to be able to or be seen as able to deliver a much larger payload to anywhere in the U.S. It should be noted that North Korea has not demonstrated a militarily useful MIRV capability, which is technically demanding. For example, it has yet to flight test a PBV, much less the deployment of MIRVs from a PBV. Given the technical demands of MIRVs, it might instead first deploy non-independently targetable multiple re-entry vehicles, MIRVs, like the US, USSR, and UK did. Even in this case, the North might want more payload capability to deploy more or larger MIRVs. Another size-related question raised by the new ICBM is, why make it road mobile? There could be a political component. After all, it is the world's biggest mobile ICBM. But to the extent the North truly intends to deploy this system, it would almost certainly judge that road mobile basing would be more survivable than silo or other fixed basing. Even though the sheer size and weight of the new ICBM would render it less mobile than the Hwasong-15 and more constrained in the portions of the road network it could use, limited to smooth paved roadways, and probably needing to fuel the missile after it was erected at a launch site, adding to vulnerability and reducing response time. Number 2 is the new submarine-launched ballistic missile, or SLBM. 
We have not been able to estimate the dimensions of the new Pugok Song 4 SLBM from the currently available images. One analyst suggests it may be the same size as the current Pugok Song 3 KN26. The missile's short and wide appearance makes sense, given the constraints of a submarine launch tube, especially for the size of submarine North Korea probably would be using. At least portions of the missile's motor case appear to be filament wound, a technology the North Koreans previously have suggested they possess. If the entire motor case were so constructed, that would reduce the missile's structure weight and allow greater range and payload capability. The North Koreans presumably intend for the new SLBM to have greater range than the 1,900 kilometers estimated for their most recently tested SLBM, albeit fired from a test barge, not a submarine, the Pugok Song 3 KN26. If the new SLBM uses a larger solid fuel motor than the Pugok Song 3, there is no open source evidence that motor has been ground tested. If the new SLBM is intended to be deployed, it may be intended for the new conventionally powered ballistic missile submarine that North Korea hinted at building in July 2019. The military significance of the new SLBM will turn on its range capability. The longer the range, the closer to North Korean military protection its launching submarine can remain and still hit regional targets. We presume the Pugok Song 4 will not have sufficient range to strike Guam, Hawaii, or the U.S. West Coast without a vulnerable transit. In any case, as noted elsewhere, this missile could provide only a marginal addition to the threat posed by the North's much larger, increasingly longer range and much more survivable land-based ballistic missile force. That's all for today. If you have a great article to be discussed about military, you can contact us by email. Thank you so much for watching Military TV.